This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is July 14th, 2024. Um, there was an attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump yesterday. I put up a video exposing the fact that this signifies that he is the beast with the wounded head that was healed from uh, Revelations chapter 13. I'm going to play a little bit of that in just a minute. Uh, this is amazingly fortuitous, perhaps providential. For months now, uh, I've been promising my audience publicly that I'm going to do a presentation of decoding the most mysterious book ever written, and that is, of course, the book of Revelations. I'm also going to have decoded and will present my insights and findings on the book of Job. And I haven't been able to do that because thing after thing has come up. I had issues with my eyes. Um, current events have uh, forced me to prioritize covering what's happening and explaining it because I'm the only person in the world that can do that. Just as I'm the only person in the world for thousands of years who uh, has fully decoded the book of Revelations and the book of Job, and I'm going to prove how they're very interconnected. And a lot of that knowledge, I'm sure, has been lost. So I'm going to be the first person in thousands of years to uh, present what that actually means. And now current events, which are the priority, are the book of Revelations. So it's incredible that I decoded all of this uh, months ago, and now uh, all the work that I did applies to current events, and uh, I'm going to be introducing this as the first of my presentations, uh, decoding the book of Revelations and the book of Job, and how they're showing how they're interrelated. So let me play a little bit of that video I put out last night, uh, talking about what happened to Trump and how it correlates directly to Revelations 13, which talks about a beast who is put in power and given authority by the dragon. Now that dragon is Leviathan. Dracon is the Greek word for dragon used in the original Greek of the book of Revelations, and that is what is used in the original Septuagint, which is the oldest uh, copy of the Old Testament we have in the book of Job for the what was translated into Hebrew as the Leviathan. It was originally Dracon in Greek. The Septuagint uh, portends to be a translation of the Hebrew, but it really went the other way around. So let's listen to a little bit of this. Now, also something and else is that uh, the beasts in the book of Revelations utilize the same word for beast in Greek, therion, therion, as is used in Job in the Septuagint for the behemoth. So the book of Revelations is all about what I've been talking about, this war between east and west, west being the Leviathan, east being the behemoth. And I'm going to explain that much more fully Keep in mind that the Leviathan originally represented Pharaoh and Egypt. Pharaoh was Satan. Egypt was the crocodile of the Nile, the realm of the Leviathan, primordial chaos that eventually got transferred to Rome. And there's a lot of history that I'm going to be covering in future presentations. So look forward to that about Pompey and Julius Caesar and Cleopatra and Mark Antony and all that interrelationship between Egypt and Rome. Rome also came to represent Edom. Now, Edom originally was aligned with the behemoth. Esau is Edom. The Bible specifically says that Edom is Esau. Edom is the color red. It is spelled Aleph, Dalet, Vav, Mem. It is Aleph, Dalet, Mem, Adam, with the addition of Vav, the serpent, so that Edom is the interjection of the serpent's seed uh, into Cain, into Eve, who produces Cain, who Esau is the reincarnation of Cain's soul. But Esau is intimately related with the Ishmaelites, 
the Ishmaelites are the Arabs. So keep all this in mind that the behemoth represents the Arabs, the Muslims, the scarlet beast of communism. It represents the alliance of Israel with the Eurasianist behemoth. All the beasts in Revelation relate to the behemoth of the book of Job. The behemoth is the holy force. It's descended from Abraham. The Leviathan is the crocodile of Egypt. It is the Roman power. It is the West, the Atlanticists of America and Great Britain. The Atlanticists of America and Great Britain are the dragon, the Leviathan, that is handing over its authority through Donald Trump to the behemoth of the Eurasianists. Donald Trump is the Antichrist representing the behemoth beast, not the Leviathan. He is given authority by the dragon, by the Leviathan, to empower the behemoth. And another one of the uh, trippy things I'm going to be talking about is what 666 really represents and how it rep, uh, how it corresponds and represents the tefillin and the phylacteries, which are worn on the forehead, the right hand, and in the heart. The phylacteries are the Shema, which is composed of six words from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and chapter 11. And the cube is six-sided. So this mark of the beast represents the Jews who wear phylacteries. So let's, uh, let's have a little look at uh, the video that I produced in which the book of Revelations uh, is quoted, the whole full chapter of um, chapter 13. Now, it's important to note that the first line of chapter 13 was actually the end of chapter 27 in uh, the Vulgate Latin translation. And that is significant because the first line talks about the dragon, but in the King James, uh, that dragon is misrepresented and literally translated as he. But when you look at it in the context of chapter 12, it, uh, it's clear that it represents the dragon who is uh, Satan, who is Egypt, who becomes Rome and the Pharaoh becomes the Caesars and emperors and kings of Rome. So uh, let's uh, take a look at that. Donald Trump is now the beast of revelation whose head was wounded to death, but did heal. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, 
and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. So that's a lot to take in. Uh, those of you with a sharp eye notice that in the King James Version, it talks about I saw on the beach, which is in fact, as I explained from the Vulgate, actually the dragon, which is properly translated in the uh, New International Version of Revelations chapter 13. You have those two beasts, uh, the first beast is put in power by the dragon. The dragon is America. It's the Leviathan. It's the West that stems from Egypt and then Rome. The beast, however, <clears throat> is a Eurasianist power. It's Donald Trump, the traitor, selling out America to the real Zionists of the world to come, the Eurasianists who want to destroy humanity in a in an apocalyptic nuclear war led by the Eurasianist uh, Vladimir Putin, who follows the messianic apocalyptic cult of the Kabbalist chaos magician Alexander Dugan. So that is uh, the second beast in this chapter is the Eurasianist, and it's the scarlet beast of Revelation uh, 17, and it's the beast of communism the beast of the Muslims. And the beast who is put in power by the dragon is propped up by the communists. You see how Putin's propagandists, how his internet trolls, how his St. Petersburg troll network, how the Russians are pushing constantly on X and everywhere else, together with the communists and the Russian-controlled libertarians and greens. Uh, are pushing for Trump to get in. And we have another one of this Chabad Lubavitch cult, which uh, is uh, which put uh, Trump, Putin, and Netanyahu in power. We have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. also representing the uh, Leviathan dragon handing over power to this Eurasianist beast. So Trump and Kennedy and Malay and Putin and Netanyahu are all on the eastern side of the Eurasianist behemoth. Again, beast is the same word, therion, in, uh, throughout Revelation and uh, throughout uh, the book of Job. And I'm going to prove that to you because it's important. Uh, here's the original Greek of Revelation. You can see uh, animal is translated as beast, and it is therion, which is the same word used for behemoth in Job. And it's used throughout Revelation. Now, another important word used in Revelation for the scarlet beast, the crimson beast, the red beast, 
that red is the same Greek word in the original Greek of Revelations that is used for the red rope that Rahab, Rahab means also the serpent and the Leviathan, let down uh, and used as a mark to protect her family, which is the red rope of the scapegoat, which is also the same color red that is given in the Septuagint for uh, Perez's twin brother, Zerah, that the midwives put a red uh, yarn around his wrist to mark him as the scapegoat. And that is the same word in the Greek used in the Old Testament and in the book of Revelations. So all of this is intimately related. The book of Revelations is telling the story of Job. And i got some very interesting things to say about Job, but I'm going to bite my tongue and uh, give that in another presentation because I don't want to overwhelm people with too much right now. So let's start reading the book of Revelation as it is properly translated. And again, remember the first line of 13 is uh, actually related to uh, the Septuagint. Let's see where it is. Uh, In the Vulgate 12.8, it's the very end of chapter 12 in the Vulgate. It talks about he, but that he is clearly the dragon, is clearly Satan, which was originally Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but became Caesar and the Romans. So the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. Uh, Robert wrote to me to give me a heads up, about his insight that Trump wears a mega hat. And that's a blasphemous name on his head. And if you look at the Church of Satan, mega is the highest degree in the Church of Satan. So it's the hierarchy of the Church of Satan. Trump is mega. He wears that blasphemous name on his head. The beast I saw resembled a leopard but had feet like those of a bear. Feet is important because Trump's uh, words before and after the shots were, let me get my shoes. And that relates also to Daniel chapter 2 and chapter 7, as I'll get into in a future presentation. Uh, And a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. That is critical, critical, critical to understand. The United States is being uh, usurped and subverted to transfer all its power to China and to Russia and to North Korea and to Israel to give the beast the behemoth, the Eurasianist forces, all of its power, and Donald Trump is the beast agent of that. He is subverting NATO. When he gets in power, he will subvert NATO in the U.S. and lift the nuclear deterrence and nuclear defenses away from Europe so that Putin can nuke Europe with impunity and so that the fifth column of all the Africans, Asians, and Middle Easterners that have been transplanted into Europe can join with Putin's armies that he is already sending against Ukraine from China, North Korea, Africa, and the Middle East. This is being done by those who control the dragon power, the Leviathan, America, and Great Britain, who are giving this beast Trump the power to usurp the West and destroy it because he is a force of the behemoth. He is not a force of the Leviathan. He does not represent American interests. He does not represent the best interests of the so-called Atlanticists 
of the sea power Leviathan of Great Britain and America. He does not represent the best interests of NATO. Instead, he is a Russian asset, but more importantly, an asset of Chabad Lubavitch and, um, and uh, Netanyahu. And it's very uh, funny. Uh, I found this in uh, Revelations chapter 9, verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, which is Satan, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. That sounds a hell of a lot like Chabadon, as in Donald Trump. Just something amusing that I found. So let's get back to talking about revelations. Remember, the authority is being given to Trump by the dragon of America to subvert America and to make the beast the dominant force on the earth. And that force will ultimately be China, who is the holy side of the behemoth. The behemoth is a holy animal in Job. It's the Leviathan that is Satan. And there is this interconnection the book of Job in the Septuagint, uh, as I'm going to prove, demonstrates that the behemoth power is the Arabs and the Leviathan was originally the crocodile of the Egyptians that became Christianity and the subversion of the West. Trump is not representing Christianity. He is using that as a subversion to destroy the West because he's a beast, a behemoth. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. In other words, they're trying to get Trump elected as uh, the head of the West, as the head of America. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound has, had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. That was a fatal wound to the head, which Trump just got... <laughs> Trump was just shot in his ear and uh, that it had his head been at a different angle or had the shot been uh, one or two inches away, it would have taken a chunk out of the side of his head and probably killed him instantly from uh, the skull and brain fragments blasting out as uh, happened with Kennedy and destroying his brain. And if his head had been turned at a different angle, it would have struck him in such a way that it would have killed him instantly. So the fatal wound was healed. It was only a little uh, piercing of his ear. Trump got his ear pierced by this bullet. So this fits in exactly with the story of Revelation, whether that's by coincidence or whether uh, something was staged, as many people believe happened on 9-11. This would sim uh, certainly have been easier to stage than uh, flying two planes into the World Trade Center and into the Pentagon. Uh, one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole f world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Trump is now being portrayed as a divine figure. He is the Antichrist, and he's being portrayed as the divine figure where the hand of God intervened and turned his head so that the bullet only gave him an ear piercing instead of blowing his brains out. <laughs> so... He is now the superhero, and he's being portrayed as this comic book hero uh, who is invincible and has the hand of God guarding him like uh, all the great heroes of the Old Testament. So this plays right into all of that. Uh, people worship the dragon because he had given authority to the beast and they also worshiped the beast and asked, who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? So this Christian nationalist movement is emerging, which supports Trump. 
That is the Leviathan supporting the behemoth of Trump to subvert the very people that the Leviathan is supposed to save. This is as the Kabbalists, and as I have been explaining for years, the transition of the prosecutor into the advocate. The prosecutor, the Christians, who initially uh, fought against Jewry, are now the advocate for Jewry, which represents the behemoth. So the Christians are committing collective suicide with Trump at their head. And this has been staged by all the Christian nationalists and all the Russians promoting Trump to be the leader of a Christian theocracy in the West. And now he is portrayed as this invincible man whom no one can wage war against because the assassination attempt failed, because the court proceedings failed. He is the Teflon Don, the Chabad Don, and uh, this all fits Revelation perfectly. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies. Trump always utters uh, arrogant words and blasphemies, and he is portrayed blasphemously as if Jesus Christ, as if the Messiah, son of Joseph, as if Cyrus, and to exercise its authority for three and a half years. Uh, that's the term of a presidency, uh, especially if it becomes a lame duck presidency. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb was slain from the creation of the world. So in my decoding of uh, the book of Revelation and the book of Job, there are historical contexts which have to be borne in mind. And what uh, these prophecy, these plans represented at the time they were written, what they came to represent as things unfolded, as Islam was created, as the behemoth by the Arab Jew, Muhammad and his Jewish wives, to uh, defeat the Byzantine Roman Empire and defeat the Persians. Uh, the Byzantine Roman Empire was then the Leviathan. The behemoth and the Leviathan fought one another. This process now becomes the Atlanticists and the Eurasianists. So there are historical periods in which the same model is used over and over and over again. And this model is given expressly in... Uh, Midrash Leviticus Rabbah 13.3, where the Jews watch as a sport as the Leviathan and behemoth Gentiles slaughter one another, and then they eat each other at the banquet feast, which is also described in the book of Revelations, which was described uh, hundreds of years before it was laid out in the Talmud, in Bava Batra, folios 74 and 75, and really beginning all the way back in 73 and uh, prior to that. So this is the same story being told over and over again, but it evolves in this historical context. So when I'm calling the dragon America, what it represents today and what it represented um, as Rome in the book of Revelations and what it represented in Job as the Egyptians, this is the same evolution of ideas, but it is all forecast originally in Job with behemoth being the Arabs and Leviathan being the Egyptians. And there's a direct lineage, how that relates to today, the Eurasianists and Muslims being the behemoth and um, the West being the Leviathan. So don't, uh, don't criticize me for putting these things in these multiple historical contexts and demonstrating how this uh, same model is used over and over again. I'm not saying that what exists today was anticipated or what is presented as if an authentic prophecy in the book of Revelations. Instead, I'm saying how events today have been sculpted 
to fit in with this same model, which applied to various peoples throughout the course of history. And the rabbinical literature is what makes clear that what I'm saying is exactly how they have described this um, transference of these powers of Leviathan and Behemoth throughout the course of history to the present and what they are obviously planning for the future with the scarlet beast being uh, the communists and the colors green and red are also very significant in uh, Islam. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with the sword, they will be killed. We have World War III uh, coming along. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. This is one of the, another one of the very important things that I want to convey to people is that the book of Revelations is not a book calling for the salvation of Christians. It is calling for the salvation of the Jewish people. It portrays a remnant of 144,000 male Jewish virgins. It talks about the 12 tribes of Israel. It has Jesus treading the winepress as the lamb to kill all the Christian peoples on the face of the earth. This is all about destroying the Christians who are the people of the dragon and destroying all the Gentiles and leaving and destroying most of the Jews as well, and leaving only a small remnant of 144,000 Jewish male virgins. And as I've been describing, their aim is to be able to get Jewish males, uh, virgins who have not been defiled by touching the evil left-hand side of the female of chaos, to produce uh, egg cells from their DNA, from their skin, and utilize their own spermatozoa to create new androgynous, immortal beings, 600,000 like the 600,000 of the Exodus, like the 600,000 uh, souls in Adam. So uh, this book of Revelations is about completely annihilating all Christians. It's one of the most anti-Christian books written in all of history, and it is a plan to kill all of you. So those of you who look forward to all of this and are promoting all of this are suicidal idiots who are setting yourselves up and all the rest of humanity to be killed off. This is a Jewish book fulfilling Jewish prophecies of the Jewish oral traditions which explain exactly what the book of Job means. And uh, stay tuned for my future presentations because it's vitally important for all of humanity that people understand all of this. The beast out of the earth. Bear in mind that the beast, the behemoth, Therion, is a hippopotamus, a river horse. It is both a land animal and a river animal. In the Nile, the river animal, hippopotamus, fights with the crocodile. There are ancient Egyptian uh, depictions of Horus riding a hippopotamus, slaying the crocodile of the Leviathan. This becomes St. George and the dragon. This is, again, the same ancient imagery of ancient Egypt appropriated in the oral traditions of Judaism, which applies Plato to Jewish mythology to create all of these plans to destroy all of us. And the book of Revelations is a plan to destroy all of us. There will be no rapture uh, as Lacunza, Rabbi Lacunza and Rabbi Ribera, uh, the Jesuit crypto Jews created that became the mythology of dispensationalism which uh, supplanted among Christian evangelicals replacement theory and supersessionism, which held that the Christians are now Jacob and the Jews are the older brother Esau, who is to serve the uh, Jacob of Christianity. And I'm gonna show you from the epistles of Barnabas, from Tertullian, uh, from Augustine's amillennialism, uh, and many others, uh, Justin Martyr, 
they all said this replacement theory that Christians are now Jacob and Jews are Esau and Jews are Edom. And there are a lot of prophecies against Edom in the Old Testament. So this is all murderous mythology leading up to a great slaughter of all humanity, including most Jews. And we got to stop it. It's insane. It's utterly insane. And it's playing out before our eyes. So the Leviathan, the beast originally came out of the sea. Uh, it's a hippopotamus, so it can come out of the sea. And it's a hippopotamus, so it can be a beast out of the earth as well. And we have this as the subverted West in terms of Donald Trump and others who are agents of Chabad Lubavitch and puppets of Putin and uh, Netanyahu, but really puppets of the very elite of the Israelites. And we have the beast of the earth representing uh, the, uh, the modern Israel, representing Soviet Russia, representing communist China, representing uh, red North Korea. Then I saw a second beast and representing Islam. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf. This is Russia and China controlling Trump. And uh, that whole Trumpist Christian nationalist movement, which is being pushed out of Russia, the libertarians, the greens, etc. And made the earth and its hab inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound has had been healed and who now seems invincible. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven. That's an Old Testament of God's wrath coming down from heaven image to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth. So we have the Russians uh, deceiving people on acts and all the many of the Russian uh, pro-Russian accounts are heavily boosted on X where I get a totally shadow banned. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. That's now Trump who was shot in the ear instead of having his brains blown out. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed, Trump is making lots of violent threats. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the pe person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. So what is 666? 666 represents the tefillim. Jews wear a cubic box on their forehead and on their right hand and in their heart. That box has written on it the Shema Yisrael. And... Uh, that is talking about how God is one. Parmenides, God is one that they ripped off through Plato. And it is composed of six words in the Hebrew. So you have it written on a scroll inside of a little box. The box is six sided. It is to be kept in the heart, on the forehead, and on the right hand. That's six, three times, six, six, six. The letter Shin, representing uh, Shekinah, like uh, Dr. Spach, has three Vavs. Vav is the number six. It is six, six, six. So this represents Shekinah, the Lord, the female aspect of yod He vav He. It is the vav He of yod He vav He. vav He, the three Vavs of Shin, as in Shekinah, Shekinah. So we have Shema, Yisrael, Yahweh, uh, Eloheinu, Yahweh, Echad. So that is, uh, 
that is uh, the Shema, and uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, that is preeminent. That's the, uh, the misunderstanding that it is all one, that they are monotheists when they are, in fact, polytheistic. Then uh, Deuteronomy, let's see if I can get a better, uh, Deuteronomy 11, verse 18, fix these words of mine in your hearts. The 666, is one is in the heart, tie them as symbols on your head, that's the to fill them on the head, and on your hands and bind them on your forehead. So that's the three sixes in the heart, on the right hand, and on the forehead. Fix these words of mine in your hearts, tie them as symbols on your hand, and bind them on your foreheads. Let's get Deuteronomy 6, I think it is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's six words in Hebrew. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. So that's one of the tefillim uh, spiritually. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. It also talks about the metzitza on the door frames. So it's on the hands, on the forehead, and in the hearts, the three sixes, the three cubes. So we also have the beasts appearing in uh, Revelation 17, and we have the notorious scarlet beast. And again, that word crimson is the same word used to describe the color of the red that's tied on the horns of the scapegoat that Rahab had a red rope hanging down from her window for the two spies of Joshua and Moses. It is also the same word for the red of the scarlet thread that was tied by the midwife on Sarah's hand to mark him as the scapegoat as opposed to um, Peretz, who represents Jacob, and uh, Zerah represents Esau. So this gets into, uh, they are also seven kings. These seven heads on the beast represent seven kings and seven hills. Now at the time, this could have been understood to represent Rome, which is the city on seven hills, which had seven ancient kings who were later um, replaced by the Caesars and the emperors. And uh, But it could also represent Jerusalem because the, as is stated in uh, the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, which is a very authoritative uh, text cited by many Kabbalists and serves as a partial basis of Kabbalah, it talks about in chapter 10 that hence we may learn that Jerusalem stands upon seven hills. And this um, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth, is said to represent a city, that's the great whore, the harlot. Jerusalem was called the harlot at this time. And uh, Jerusalem had to be destroyed in order to make way for the new Jerusalem. And it is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. So at this time, this could have represented either Jerusalem or Rome in the modern context. It can represent uh, America in Washington, D.C. It can represent Beijing. It can represent Moscow. 
It can represent Jerusalem. Uh, I'm not going to get into it too heavily right now, but I will in future presentations. So those seven heads on the beast are the seven kings. Now this also becomes an eighth king, and uh, I've deciphered what that probably represented. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, but when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. How would that be interpreted by modern Kabbalists? That would be interpreted by modern Kabbalists as the seven kings of Rome becoming the eight kings of Edom that represents Rome changing from, that represents Edom changing from the Edomites who were converted by John Heron, uh, Heronus, I can never remember how his name is pronounced, uh, who then became Jews, uh, the new Edomites then became Rome, who attacked Israel at the same time that the uh, real Edomites of uh, Edom became Jews, were uh, made into Jews uh, by the high priest and by the kings of the uh, Maccabeans. And so we have Rome now becoming Edom. So it's changing from the seven kings of Rome to the eight kings of Edom who existed before the kings of Israel. And that's a very important concept in Kabbalah. I'm not going to explain it all. It relates to the Zeron pin and other uh, very esoteric things, but I'll explain it later, I hope, in future presentations. It also has a very significant meaning to Chabad Lubavitchers. Chabad Lubavitch always anticipated that the seven rebbies who began with uh, Schnort Salman of Liadi, there would only be seven rebbies. And after the seventh rebbe, the eighth king would be the Messiah. The Messiah would arrive. So all of this talk about the beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king that related, I think, in the time of Revelation to the idea of Rome becoming the eight kings of Edom, which no longer were but would be when Rome became Edom. But to Chabad Lubavitch today, that represents the fact that Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson was uh, the seventh Rebbe, he is dead, and it is now time for, um, for Benjamin Netanyahu to usher in the eighth king, the real king, uh, the King David, Messiah, son of David, to rule the world from Jerusalem. And that will be the appearance of the eighth king in terms of Chabad Lubavitch. Uh, this shows um, how in the book of Job, the Leviathan is called the dragon, just as the dragon is written in the Greek. This is in the Septuagint, uh, just as the dragon is written in the Greek in Revelations. So I think I've covered uh, pretty much all that I wanted to cover for this first presentation on my decoding of the books of Revelation and the books of Job. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank the very kind and generous contributors who have enabled me to keep this work going. Uh, I'm sorry it took so long to get this book, this uh, presentations going. Uh, I've been promising this for months. Again, I had to prioritize other things, not by choice, but of necessity. Uh, my eyes are starting to heal a little bit. And uh, 
We're going to be blasting forward, and uh, I'm going to get into the real meat of what this Leviathan and behemoth mythology out of the book of Job really means and what the book of Job really signifies and what the book of Revelations has planned for us, the horrific fate that uh, it wants, uh, that these people are planning for all of humanity to destroy us, to crush our heads in the wine press, to uh, get blood up to the height of the horse's bridles and all other kinds of vile, vile, inhumane, genocidal crap which is playing out before our eyes. We have Putin threatening this apocalyptic nuclear war as the head of the behemoth. We have Trump um, trying to get ushered into the White House to transfer the authority of the dragon of the West to the behemoth of Putin to completely annihilate uh, all the white European peoples of the earth as one of the first steps in this complete extermination of all of humanity. The Eurasianists will then be slaughtered. Uh, the Persians will all be exterminated in this exchange. And then they plan to only have a small remnant. And I'm going to get into how the book of Revelations also talks about this idea that the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven to the earth. What that really means is the new Jerusalem is going to be subterranean. The Essenes talked about a new Jerusalem in the Dead Sea Scrolls long before the book of Revelations was written. The Essenes lived in caves. The Christians in Turkey, 20,000 of them lived underground in a subterranean world that was referred to in Ethiopia as the New Jerusalem. The Ethiopians built their Christian churches underground. The dimensions of the New Jerusalem given could only represent what ancient peoples would have understood to be a subterranean world that would be lit by the divine power of the skin of the Leviathan, by the black sun in the center of hell, in the center of the earth. The new Jerusalem, a lot of people say it's a planet Saturn descending a cube down to the earth. That's not what it was understood to represent by the early Christians and by the Essenes. It was instead to represent the destruction of the harlot whore of the city of Jerusalem, to be replaced by a subterranean Jerusalem as the Essenes lived in the caves of the mountains in the new millennium. And we had this process where when the millenniums would happen, these troglodytes would stock up their caves to survive the calamities that they anticipated as the ages would change. The age of Pisces of Christ is giving way to the age of Aquarius. They are stocking up these subterranean worlds of nuclear bunkers and tunnels. And uh, that's what the New Jerusalem is slated to be. Uh, so let's have a look once again at uh, that video I made, a little bit of it, uh, to remind you of how horrific and bloody this all is. Uh, what it portends for humanity. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank my contributors. If you'd like to contribute, you can do so at my website, cjbbooks.com. Under each book title, there's a contribution link. Um, I want to thank those who have been contributing. I want to thank all of the people who have been retweeting and reposting my work, arranging interviews for me, uh, et cetera. Thank you all very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I'd be nowhere without you, and uh, I thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe, and look forward to my full and deep decoding of the book of Revelations and the book of Job. Uh, I'm going to get into the real esoteric stuff, so I uh, look forward to that. And um, now let's see the beast with the wounded head that was healed, uh, uh, how we're headed into hell. Donald Trump is now the beast of revelation whose head was wounded to death, but did heal. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion.
and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Uh, someone who was